In this video, we'll look into two new opcodes that performs Boolean bit work. The first one is AND operation. So similar to AND operation, it takes three operand. The first one is the destination registers. And the first value for the AND operation and the third operand represent the second value to perform the end operation so basically you have an end operation so the first value come from second operand and another value come from the third operand and the output is stored in the destination register and of course this is only for one bit and since our registers is a 32 bit length from G bit 0 to bit 31 so we have to perform this bitwise operation for the end for those for all the 32 bit in these registers let's assume r1 has the value of 0 0 0 0 f f f f and in R2, we have F, 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 0, 0, 0, 0. So if you are asked to do an N and store the result into, let's say, register 3 between R1 and R2. So basically, you have to do the bitwise N operation for all the T2 bit. So since everything end with zero, you get zero. So the result in R three you will have. The second opcode is all. So to perform an all operation, so you also have three operand. The first one is the destination registers, and as well as second and third operand is the value for you to carry out the all operation. So similar to N, just in this case, this is the OR operation from the first and the second registers. So again, this is also one bit operation. So means we have to do in the bitwise operation for 32 times. So let's say we need to do a OR operation and the result store at register 4 with the same value from register 1 and register 2 which is 0 0 0 0 f f f f and f f f 0 0 0 so and after you do the or all operation for each single bit you will get f f f f f f f f and since everything you are with one, you will get one at the end. And an all operation is actually very uh, important for the bitwise operation. For example, if you have anything, I mean, whether it's zero or one, if you end with one, you will get back the value of the original value. Right, if you have whatever bit is 0 or 1 you end with 0 you will get a 0 value in return so in contrast for the all operation any bits whether it's 0 or 1 if you all with 1 you will get 1 in return and anything I mean 0 and 1 if you all with 0 you will always get back the original value whether it's, if this is 0 and you will get 0 if this is bit 1 and you will get back bit 1 because of this characteristic for n or all operation they are very useful if you would need to perform some bitwise operation so for for n if if you need to make any bit low or 0 then we can use an operation. If you need to make any 
either of the bits within the 32 bit you want to make any of the bits to turn high then we can use an all operation so for example let's say i have a value in register 1 and the value is 0, 0, 0, 0, f, 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 f. so let's say i want to make the bit to become 0 so for instance bit number 15 so i could do an end operation with the with the register 1 as the destination and the first operand is register 1 and let's say i have the register 5 So, of course, we don't have any value at the register 5 first. So, what this is going to do is that we're going to perform an end operation for this 32 bit register, a register 1 and register 5, and the result it will store it at register 1. So, let's say we need to make the bit 15 to low, but we're not going to disturb other bits in register 1. So, we might not know what is the original value that's why we couldn't just simply replace the whole 32 bits so this is where the end operation is very useful so i could actually put a value of f f f f and 7 f f f so assuming this is my r5 and I have a zero if you look at bit number seven, um, I mean the value seven in hexadecimal is equivalent to zero one one one. So this is bit fifteen, bit fourteen, bit thirteen and bit twelve. So since anything that end with a zero, you will get back zero. So indirectly register one. The value in register 1 bit 15 will become 0 since the rest of the bits is 1 because f represent 1 1 1 1 in binary and 1 1 1 1 in this case so whatever value you have before in register 1 will be remain except bit 15 so after this operation i basically make my register 1 to become 7 f because of bit 15 has changed to 0 based on this operation and value you have in R5 well same things you could do with all except in the in the opposite direction so let's say I have a value in register 2 which is FFFF FF, 0, 0, 0, 0. so let's say I in the same time I also want to make bit number 15 to 1 so we could use an all operation and with the same concept but instead of using n because n's only can make a bit low so they definitely cannot make any bits to become 1 or high so if you need to change any bit to high or 1 in binary then we have to choose to use the all operation so let's say I have an all operation for register 2 as the destination and register 2 as a first value for the all and let's say I have a 6 as a third operand both will do an all operation and the result will replace or store in register 2. So unlike the end operation, in order for all to make a bit to become 1 or high you have to put 1 in the operation if the rest that you don't want to change you want to remain what is the original value then we have to all with 0 so in our case let's say we only need to change bit 15 one of the bit 15 to high the rest we don't want to modify or we don't want to change so that's why we have to put 0 0 0 0 so to maintain all the 0 so so in order to change bit 15 the first bit our bit 15 has to be all with 1 
so this has to be 8 0 and 0 0 so the reason why it's 8 is because 8 if in binary is 0 uh, is 1 0 0 and 0 so this is bit 15 14 13 and 12 so if we all register whatever value in register 2 with the value you have in register 6 which is 8000 so after the operation we will replace register 2 and since this bit 15 is 1 so whatever value in bit 15 we will change to 1 and end up to be this is also 8000 so beside the bitwise operation as what we have explained just now we can also use n as the bit tester to figure out whether the bit we are interested whether it's high or it's low so let's say i have a n operation uh, let's say i put the result in register 7 and I want to test whether register 1, the value we have in the register 1 for the bit 15, whether the bit 15 is 1 or the bit 15 is 0. So the way we do it is that we try to end bit uh, register 1 with all 0 because everything that you end with 0, you will get with 0 except the bit that we are interested so for example in this case if you are interested in b15 so we should end register 1 with the value 0 0 0 8 0 and 0 0 so that bit 15 is high so in this case let's say if bit 15 is 0 you will get back as 0 in return if the bit 15 is 1 you will get back 1 in return so we could put R7 as the destination so register 1 is the value we want to test and register 6 is the masking that we are using to check whether bit 15 whether it's high or it's low so the result is stored in R7 then we can actually compare whether R7 with the value of 0 so let's assume that R1 at bit 15, the value is 0. So 0 and you end with 1. So you will get back 0. So at the end, if bit number 15 is 0, then the result you get will be 0 x 0. So in case if bit 15 is 1 and if this is 1 you end with 1 so you will get back 1 in return so you will get the result in R7 as 0, 0, 0. so after I compare I could simply use a branch if R7 is equal to 0 mean this value is low Otherwise, I could branch always uh, means that bit 15 is high because when bit 15 is high, R7 will no longer equals to 0, it will equals to 8000. So this complete the topics today and I will see you in future videos.